Um, yeah, uh, I hope everyone's got their necessary shots of caffeine. Uh, it's been an incredibly long day. Um, I know I needed one. Uh, in case you're wondering where did all those chicken tandoori sandwiches go. And, you know, uh, uh, anyway, I hope I don't see any yawning or dozing faces in the audience today. If you do need to, uh, I suggest you do some kind of a ninja technique. Pull off some kind of a poker face so that I don't see it. Uh, my name is Mihir, I am from Cantor, uh, and I make my living out of measuring brand marketing campaigns. Partnering here with me today is the lovely Sarah Myers. Uh, she is the general manager for audience and marketing at the REA Group. She's also been my client for three plus years, so I'm looking forward to doing this talk with you, Sarah. Sounds good. Anyway, let's just jump straight into it. 30 and five. I'm not too sure what these two numbers mean to you at a personal level, but for the next 15 to 20 minutes, Sarah and I are asking that you keep these two numbers in your minds. You ask why? Because in the next 15 to 20 minutes, we're gonna tell you how you can achieve a 30% higher return on your marketing spend by leveraging on only five guaranteed takeaways to improvise not only the brand impact on the brands you're working for, but also the return on ad spends on them. Cool, so I'll let Sarah set some context for us. Thanks, Mihir. So as marketers, the media landscape is constantly changing. We've got new measurement, new channels, new technologies that we're constantly navigating. And every year, the expectations to determine the effectiveness of your marketing ROI increases. And then we overlay economic factors. And so there's a lot that we are all constantly juggling. And then there's all the outcomes that we're trying to measure. So when you try to break it down in an oversimplified world, campaigns generally fall into one of two buckets. They're either a brand campaign or a performance campaign. And when we think about performance campaigns, they're really quite a linear relationship. You're measuring clicks, you're measuring conversion, and there's a really simple way of trying to understand how to increase the effectiveness of your channels that you're running through performance marketing. Brand, on the other hand, isn't as simple. I'm a huge advocate of brand marketing and I've spent a lot of time really making sure that I can demonstrate the effectiveness of that at ROI, working closely with Kantar. It's a really challenging space to work out how do you understand the emotional connection that someone has to your brand and be able to justify that to your CEO and CFO and ensure that they can continue to top up the marketing investment that you have at hand. So when you really try to simplify it down, I think it's really important that you, do, you, that you treat brand campaigns with the same level of respect and make sure that you are measuring through the same lens. Look, I think marketers are forever juggling the long and the short of it, and this has been discussed at length, no matter kind of who you are. But I think it's incredibly important, as Vinay and Field have highlighted, that we make sure that we are really respecting the brand and emotional priming world because it's really crucial to long-term success. I think I see a statement like this and it makes me think what a dream it would have been to have been a marketer 30 years ago. It's a far more simplified world. The digital complexity that we are navigating as well as the constant changing landscapes mean that campaigns really have to work hard to be effective and stand out. So there's a lot that we're all trying to juggle. Layer on that the macroeconomic factors. Infla inflation is up, ad spend is down. And ultimately, as marketers, we're continually, continually expecting to do more with less. So let's talk a little bit about how we've navigated that at REA. Huh. So undoubtedly, we are amid some of the toughest times to expect any kind of optimization to our marketing spends. And while it might be a distant dream from many organizations, remember there are always outliers. Today I'm proud to announce that since autumn 2020, when we first began to measure campaigns for realestate.com.au, we've realized a massive 30% higher return on marketing investment. And this is no small feat by any means. Remember, we are talking about REA, realestate.com.au. Any random campaign that I can pull, pull up and look at the ad spends of, they'll be running in multiples of millions. So 30% is not a small number by any means. In fact, if you ask me to put a dollar number to this, Figuratively, this translates to around $6 million in media efficiency or savings. So when we crunched these numbers and reported them to Sarah, we knew straight away that we have to share the recipe of this success with the industry today, which is exactly what we're gonna do. You can do this too. 
Today we're going to share five guaranteed takeaways that you can improvise on your brand growth and also the return on your ad spend. So without further ado, I'll jump straight into it. Our first piece is, we're saying, ignore the creative at your own peril. You see, when you're starting to build a campaign, you really don't want to start at the wrong foot. In many ways, the creative is the heartbeat of your campaign. And I might just take a pause here and say, I don't see any dozing or yawning audiences, but I do see a few rolling eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, oh my god, tell me something I don't know. Um, <laughs> I know creative is important. Well, if creative is so important, why is it that only a few of us are essentially measuring it? It is really important, we all know that. And to those naysayers who ask, okay, how important is creative, for the nth number of time about to report that it is this 50% role of the creative itself. We know that creative is the number one factor in driving campaign success. <coughs> In fact, here at Cantor, we find ourselves to be very lucky enough to do a lot of campaign measurements, and we've been able to classify different campaigns based on creative quality. And from some of that analysis, we know that if you have a higher quality creative, you can actually realize five times higher return on your marketing spends. So it should then not come as any surprise to you on how REA performs in market. And here's just one example of just one creative that we've tested recently, an outdoor creative. It's super simple, super clear, super precise. And if you look at the left, right side of your, <laughs> left side of your screen, you can see how the creative essentially smashes canter norms across the park. When we ask our respondents what they really feel about these creatives, they're really telling us the REA creatives are involving, distinctive, interesting, which is exactly the kind of involvement map you want to nail with your audiences. So ignore the creative at your own peril. So once you've finalized your creative, then comes the media mix. Sarah? So we've worked really closely with Kantar to make sure that we, we know the role that every single channel in our media mix is performing. And I think it's, it's important because we're managing big budgets and it's about making sure that we're not wasting that investment. Next slide. Yeah. And really, when you see stats like this, 20% of our touch points drive 80% of the impact. You really need to know what the optimal combinations of your channels are, which channels and pairings work best to drive that greater co collective input, and which synergies can you really drive maximum impact from. Ultimately, all channels have the opportunity to perform, but depending on whether you're a category leader or a challenger brand, you're going to be determining different measures of success in terms of your brand marketing. Is it top of mind awareness? Is it preference? Is it consideration? Different channels will perform at different levels within the marketing funnel. And as marketers, we need to know what that means for your brand and category, because at the end of the day, the recipe is different for every brand and category. There's no one secret sauce or perfect formula that, that consists across all categories. It's really different in each space. And I think what we've really learned at REA is TV continues to perform incredibly well for us. But when we pair TV <coughs> with YouTube or TV with transit or TV with digital audio, that's where we really start to see incredible synergies and, and drive much further impact beyond the channels in isolation. What also is really important to understand is the attribution, sorry, the attributes that exist under each of those core drivers and making sure that's showing up consistently in the creative messages across each of those channels. Cool. So you've finalized the creative, you've finalized the media mix, you're now thinking budget allocation. Should I shift some of my traditional media spends to digital? And our learning there says, yes, do that with confidence, but also kind of tread it with a little bit of caution as well. Like I said, we're very proud that we actually had the opportunity to measure a lot of campaigns. We've been doing that for over a decade now. Here's some data from Australian campaigns. And if I may get your attention to the dark gray or black aspects of these charts, they're basically talking about how share of contribution of different channels essentially has performed over time. And the dark gray aspects are representing the consortium of different digital channels. You can see how the role of digital essentially has exponentially growing. Digital is also efficient to buy, right? 
So why not shift some of our spends to digital? But there is a dark side. When we ask our respondents what they feel about offline ads versus online ads, they're really telling us with offline ads, they think of them as trustworthy, relevant, fun and entertaining, better quality and innovative. As against that, when we ask them about online ads, they're really telling us excessive targeting, repetitiveness, sometimes dull and boring, but more importantly, intrusive. And we all know what intrusion does to us. It builds distrust, right? So when you're running an online ad, what that means is that your online ads are having to work that much harder to drive trust within your target audiences. So three points done. The creative done, the media mix done, you've allocated your budgets. Now's the time to think about how your different channels are going to play up together. This is what, in many ways, we call as media multipliers or syner synergies. What are those? The synergies is where two or more channels are coming together, partnering, and being able to drive brand impact. You may ask, have you quantified the impact of synergies? And as you can tell, I like to answer my own questions. <laughs> so we know globally that 35% of campaigns impact essentially come in from synergies. In fact, here in Australia, that number is even higher. We know that 43% of campaigns impact essentially comes from synergies. Think about it. If you're not planning for your synergies in your campaign, you stand at risk of losing almost 43% of potential impact that you could have delivered. So how do you drive synergies? Three points. One, ensure there is a duplication of reach across those channels. Two, ensure you're flighting your medias parallelly, at parallel with each other, so your audiences get exposed to the ads across multiple channels. And three really is the creative. So ensure your creative speaking the same language across different channels. In fact, a pro tip, if you actually integrate the creative within the platforms in which they are appearing, we have realized you can actually get even higher 60% impact, which is exactly what REA has been doing as well. So here's a result of some of one of the latest campaigns we've measured for them, which is the autumn campaign. And if you can realize more than 50% of their campaigns impact came in through synergies. For our last and final point, I'll request Sarah to talk us through them. So as I touched on, depending on where, whether you're a category leader or a challenger brand, you really need to understand what you're trying to drive. If it's consideration, what are the drivers of consideration for your category? If it's preference, what are the drivers? Really make sure that you know the role of each channel and whether they are driving preference or if they're driving consideration. Because if you're not setting out to drive consideration, there's wastage there. There's many cross-media studies that we've run across REA. We're probably at about six or so. Mortgage choices and other brands that we run them for. But we have different measures of success for each of those brands. So we can't just take one media plan or one approach that we've got in terms of cross-media studies and make sure that we're then translating it. There's different nuances there. Make sure that you know what messages drive those consideration preferences and bake that into your creative as well. And then as we've discussed, there's kind of brand and performance in an oversimplified world. Continue to measure conversion, but don't overlook brand given its complexity. Make sure that you're measuring brand impact. Make sure that each of your teams, whether they're your brand team or your performance team, really know and understand and respect the art of each area and that they can understand why investment is sitting in brand or why investment is sitting in performance and what those measures of success look like. And once you've got that clear narrative, make sure that you're sharing that far and wide across the business. So to recap, at REA, we've really spent a lot of time creative in creative testing. For us, that's allowed us to really know what are the distinctive assets that we have and, and provide a lot of you know, cut through and pulling power for us. We've continued to optimize across various campaigns. For many of you, they'll feel pretty consistent, but with each nuance that we keep progressing, we continue to drive greater impact. Choose that media mix wisely. Know the role of each channel. You know, for all the marketers out there, you need to know what role digital audio and radio is playing for you? What role is YouTube playing? And what are those complementary channels together? In terms of digital, we've had incredible success in elevating digital amongst our media mix, 
but we've really made sure that we're adhering to best practice when it comes to creative in each of those channels. You can't just shift and lift a TV asset and dump it on YouTube and expect it to work as well. It's really important to bring your branding asset up front. Sticking it at the end, it just does not drive the same level of impact. Uh, really make the most of those media multipliers. I think you know, our, our ability to realise millions of dollars of impact is about making sure we really understand the synergies of those channels and so that we can leverage those multipliers and shift that investment elsewhere. And then really know what matters for your brand and business and make sure that the entire marketing team and the exec team really know why they continue to kind of top up the millions of dollars that you have at your fingertips and the results that you're delivering. So that's some of our stories at REA and our partnership with Canter. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Does anybody have any questions for um, our presenters? Just now as well. Just we were incredibly clear, so I hope <laughs> you don't. <laughs> I think we're good. Well, okay, so thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much.